I played the full version of Tekken 8. I was invited out to Bandai Namco's preview event for Tekken 8, where the game build had all of the characters, all the stages, and they let us play the first few chapters of the story mode and the arcade quest. They let us train the ghosts for the super ghost battles. And I'm going to tell you all about that in just a second. But I should let you know, we didn't have that much free time to actually get really in-depth with all of the characters, right? But I do have another video I'm working on for Reyna as well, so make sure you guys check that out. But also, I play some Tekken Ball. So this is going to be more of like a sort of review of what the final product of Tekken 8 is looking like because the game is just about a month away. So let's get right into it. First up, the characters, right? Because this is the first time we got to see all of the characters in the game at the same time. You know, I knew we weren't going to have a lot of time, so I actually just took a look at a lot of their outfits. I recorded some AI matches, which I might upload later separately, and we can take a look at them together. I'll probably just watch them on stream, but regardless, we have some footage of all the characters out here. And I think the big takeaway is that overall, all characters that we've seen in the past games, moving on from Tekken 7 to Tekken 8, they've all been expanded upon, right? Much in the same way you've seen these other characters expanded upon when we've played the CBT and the CNT, etc., right? For example, Lee. Lee has just frames like crazy now. He's got a slide just frame with blue sparks on it, which makes me mad jealous. It makes me kind of want to pick up the character, to be honest. Uh, you've got Kuma with Hayati moves. You know that Panda has some Ling Xiaoyu moves. But overall, they're still the bear characters, right? We have special interactions between the characters during their intros, which is cool to see again, right? It's a nice throwback or a nod back to Tekken Tag 2, which seemed like that's so much more love and care for all the characters in the game. And you see that a lot. We've seen a lot of those examples already in the CBT and the CNT, but there's even more in the game. So it's very cool to discover these as we play it along. Uh, Reyna, she's got multiple stances. She's less like Heihachi than I was expecting her to be. Uh, she does have an electric though, and she does have a wave dash. So if you guys are Mishima experts, she's right up your alley. Victor, I would say is more of a flashy character. I think he's gonna be very flashy and he's gonna catch a lot of people off guard very early in this game's life. But it's yet to be determined how all these characters play out and how strong they'll actually be when the game comes out. As for the stages, there are a couple of new stages out here that we have not seen at all yet, right? And I think the craziest thing was the space stage, right back behind me, the space stage actually has a transition similar to Devil's Pit in Tekken 7, but beyond that, it also has a floor blast. So where I kind of thought that we had already had seen all the new mechanics in this game, there's another combo extension mechanic off the stage, and it's very specific to just one stage in the entire game that has a floor blast. Other than that, when you think about all the other mechanics that they've added, Tekken 8 actually has a lot of new mechanics now, right? So we already had wall breaks, now there's a hard wall break. We've already had floor breaks, now there is a hard floor break. There's also the wall blast that we've seen before, but they also call it a wall bound, which is kind of odd to me, right? So there is a wall blast and a wall bound. I don't actually know the difference, but the Azucena stage, Ortiz Farm, that has the wall bound, which would look to me like the wall blast from before. So it's a very similar mechanic. Uh, the technical difference of that, we'll figure out when the game comes out, I guess. Now let's switch gears and talk about Arcade Quest, which is basically a separate sort of story mode in the game, right? The main story mode, that's about, you know, the Mishimas and the actual story of the Tekken universe. This story mode is about you, the player, going to an arcade, learning to play, meeting people at the arcade, training up, forming a squad, you know, and battling in tournaments in these arcade scenarios. So it's sort of like a treasure battle mode, except if it had a story. Think of it that way, I think, because you get to meet people in the arcades, you can battle their ghosts. There's dialogue between them. That's a lot of fun. There are people that come in who are like total jerks, just like in real arcades. You know, people who think they're better than everyone else. And it captures a lot of the essence of what the arcade lifestyle was like, which is super cool and super unique. And it also ties into the Tekken World Tour, right? So this is something I had talked about previously. I was playing one of those F1 racing games and I thought it was so cool that your career mode ties you into the real F1 racers, right? So if this would actually get to the next level like maybe the next game or some expansion like this would actually lead you to being like hey you're gonna enter the tech world tour and you're playing against knee or arslan ash or something right i think that would be absolutely amazing and i hope that they go in that direction in the future but the actual mode the arcade quest where you're at the arcade you train up you go to a different arcade you train up over there you know and you battle the people over there that kind of mentality is pretty neat and it's something i haven't really seen done in this way before so i really enjoyed arcade quest actually now, let me quickly touch on this ghost battle, right? We've seen Super Ghost Battle in the past. I used it a little bit in the past as well, but 
it was kind of whatever. I didn't really give it much credit. I thought it was like, oh, it's a slight improvement over what they had in the past, right? This time around, though, when you're in this arcade quest, you get to train your ghost. At the time, I was experimenting with Reyna, and Reyna, she has got the stance with the three button. So basically, you can hit forward three, back three, whatever, right? And you can do these different movements with her, and that's how kind of she moves weirdly across the screen. So I was experimenting with it uh, right before I got to record this ghost battle. So what ends up happening is it says like, hey, you're training your ghost now. Do what you want. So I started doing my own weird movement thing that I had come up with on the spot right then. I was like, oh, I can do these stance in this direction. And it just kind of makes her zigzag backwards, right? So I do that. And then the ghost immediately starts replicating that. And the ghost starts using that weird movement in this way that I had just created on the fly. And then I dropped the combo and the ghost would continually drop the combo in the same place. And then when I learned to do the combo correctly, the ghost picked up and started doing the combo correctly as well. So it's a very, very interesting mechanic. Like I knew that it was going to be better than before, uh, but I didn't see the potential in it until it started copying my movements exactly. This is the best ghost battle feature I've ever seen. Let's switch gears though and talk about the story mode, which is a big step up from Tekken 7, right? So if you guys have not seen it yet, I did put up a first look of chapter one. Make sure you guys go ahead and check that on right up there, top right of the screen. But most importantly about this, right? There's no narrator. And I think that was the biggest thing that dragged down Tekken 7 story. And the fact that there's no narrator here, it just makes everything so much better. The level of polish has increased dramatically, right? There's way more polish here, way more action-packed, way bigger scenes, way cooler cutscenes and slow motion than were in 7. So it's just everything that they had done in Tekken 7 is now taken up a notch. And I mean a big notch. So I played a few chapters of it. I can't wait to see how much more there is in the game. Like the length of the story is really uh, going to be a deciding factor of how much I actually like it or not. Because I played a few chapters and it felt like I was already 75% done with the game. So if it's actually much longer than that, like let's say it's eight to 10 chapters long, then I'm going to be very interested to see how the whole thing holds up, right? Uh, but without a doubt, it's already going to be the best story that they've done in any Tekken game ever. And last but not least, Tekken Ball is back. Not a lot to say here. We've already seen in the past, right? But I will say that having played it myself now, heat engagers are a little bit weird in this mode, right? Because you hit it and then you're running in, but the ball's already traveling. Uh, and then I think I played against Victor, and he does this weird thing where he's got the string, but then he shoots the guns afterwards, right? So what ends up happening is the string hits the ball, and now you're dealing with the ball coming at you. But while you're dealing with the ball, this guy is shooting you from across the beach or whatever, right? So it's like, that doesn't really fit the Tekken ball mentality. You know, it's, it's very strange to me, and I don't know how they fix that. Uh, so we'll see how that all plays out. But overall, Tekken ball's back, and it's cool. So that's basically it, right? Like, I mean, other things we've already touched on in the past, and this time we had a little more complete look at it, but it's still very cool. Practice mode, probably the best practice mode they've ever made. There's also like input lag settings, like per frame, uh, which I thought was pretty neat. You have the customization, customization pretty much as we expected to see. It's, it's very similar to how we've had customization in the past. I didn't really dig through it that deep because we didn't have that much time, uh, but it's also avatar customization as well, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on in here in this game. Um, but with that being said, let's talk about the pros and cons, right? Because now that I've kind of seen this full product of what Tekken 8 is, uh, I kind of have a good picture, I think, of, you know, what I like about it and what I don't like about it. And yeah, let's, start with the, let's start with the pros. We'll start with the pros, the good stuff, right? Uh, the graphics are pretty. They're, they're fantastic, right? The starting roster, 32 characters, nice and big. We're not going to be waiting for a lot of these characters to show up, although I know that some of you guys are still missing your main characters. But there's also a bunch of outfits for them. You know, when Tekken 7 launched, a lot of those characters had the same old outfits. It took forever before we even saw them in new outfits. So all those things, fantastic, right? Uh, there's a good variety of stages, and all the stages have different mechanics. So I think that's, that's a pretty good thing to have in a fighting game, right? There's no infinite stage, which I think is pretty interesting for a decision, uh, especially considering how they've changed the heat system over the year. Um, but... It's overall, I think that it's a good change. I don't think that people are really going to be complaining about not having an infinite stage. So, fantastic. Jukebox mode. Jukebox mode is available now for all systems. Right before, it was limited to the PlayStation. Now, even us guys on the PC, we can get jukebox mode as well. That's a nice pro. And Tekken Ball is back, right? People want it, and we can play it online. Fantastic, right? All these things we wanted. 
But now let's talk about some of the cons, right? And I think the number one thing for me is that there is still no full tutorial mode in the game. Like, obviously, I started this channel, Level Up Your Game, creating tutorials for Tekken because they didn't exist in the game. And I think that this game is very difficult for fighting, play, fighting game players to get into. A lot of the mechanics don't carry over from other fighting games. So I'm a little disappointed that it's still not in the game. You know, I feel like there should have been a separate section similar to Guilty Gear or something where it just lists everything off, like little text descriptions, you know, paragraph of a little short video example, and that's it. And I, and I feel like that would have been very easy for them to do. But again, it's not something that, that they've done. Instead, they're opting to just have an easier control scheme where, look, you can do stuff just by mashing, essentially, with these different buttons, and it'll automatically do combos for you and things, right? Like. That to me is not how you should approach teaching people to play your game, um, but that's what they've decided to do here, right? Uh, I also don't know how the story mode is going to connect with players who aren't Tekken diehard fans. Like for me, fantastic. You know, I love seeing, uh, you know, Devil Jin and Devil Kazuya battling and shooting lasers at each other, uh, but I don't know how that's going to sit well or how that's going to sit, period, with people who are just coming up from Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or Guilty Gear or wherever, right? Um, and then personally, I'm still not sold on the heat mechanic or chip damage. I feel like it's lost its own essence in a way. Like when this game was first shown with the heat mechanic, it seemed like, oh my gosh, this is so much to learn. There's so much potential here to optimize your combos and your, your flow in the state of the round. Like you're going to really have to pay attention and learn all the different options, you know, because before we had multiple heat dashes and everything, and they've simplified all of that to the point now where it's kind of like a baby mode that I don't really feel has a lot of depth to it anymore. Like, it's still going to have some depth. It's going to have impact in matches, but I'm not sold on it as much as I was at the beginning of the year, right? So the heat system being simplified, on one hand, it helps everyone learn the game and get into it, but I still feel like it's, it's too simplified now, and I'm really concerned about how all the different characters are going to be able to manage it, right? And on top of that, it's still the chip damage, right? So chip damage is a concept that I feel like does not belong in Tekken, unfortunately. Like, I'm a boomer. Uh, without a doubt, I'm a boomer. But the chip damage, when I've seen it in play so far, and I've seen instances where, okay, I got chipped, but it's just recoverable health. It's fine, right? Is what the mentality is supposed to be. But so many times I see it where you're chipped, you're chipped, you're chipped, and then they hit you with something and you die. So you never had a chance to recover that chip health. So the chip health might as well have been real damage taken. So it's a big unknown to me. Both those systems together, the heat system plus the chip damage system, that's still a big question mark. I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, and then, you know, going back to just like the casual stuff in Tekken, right? When you boot up the game and you just wanna play around, like I think it's a fighting game, Tekken 8 has a lot of cool stuff, right? It's got the story mode, it's got arcade quest. Uh, and arcade, arcade quest is much better than expected. I'm, I'm really happy with that actually. Uh, and then you've got Tekken Ball now, right? Which you can play online. So you've got all these different things you can do outside of just versing your friends and playing online so in a way it feels great but somehow it still feels short of like Tekken 3 right like Tekken 3 we had so many different options with like team battle mode which is still not here uh you had like the Tekken Force which granted now we have these other story modes which are so much better than Tekken Force ever was but the Tekken Force mode I thought was so unique and I thought there was such a fun way to experiment with your roster and your move list for your character you know what I mean like it just it felt like the best way to utilize the roster of your game and experiment with their move list in a totally non-serious way. So I wish that the classic Tekken Force and the team battle were still here in some way. Uh, and still no Mokujin. Why do we not have Mokujin? I don't understand. Uh, but again, the graphics and everything are beautiful. The game is fantastic other than that. So I'm looking forward to it, man. One month plus out of the way. Tekken 8's almost here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Rip. Make sure you guys click on that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Boom! I'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one.